Welcome to module 2 of lecture 7. In the last module, we saw that for operations within a simple data flow graph within a basic block and for temporary registers within a simple operation constraint graph within a basic block, their corresponding resource sharing models can be um, formed using interval graphs. And we can find uh, a minimum, the minimum number of registers required to uh, implement a set of temporary variables within the operation constraints graph or the minimum number of functional units required for each type to implement the behavioral operations within uh, an operation constraints graph can be obtained in polynomial time using graph coloring of the conflict graph corresponding to the operations or the registers in the operation constraints graph within a simple basic block. We use the left edge algorithm to obtain such an, um, an optimal coloring of the interval graph in n log n time. We saw that uh, here n is the number of operations or the number of um, temporary registers that we have in the graph and we need to sort the elements uh, at the start of the algorithm. Uh, in terms of the left edges of their intervals and this uh, amounts to the n log n complexity of the left edge algorithm. In this module, we will see a bigger scenario. We will see the resource sharing problems that exist when we consider not only a single operation constraints graph, but we consider um, different operation constraints graph across modules. Now, uh, we need to understand that within a single operation constraint graph, there are no controls uh, statements, there are no mutually exclusive operations, there are no branches and there are no loops. But however, when we consider resource cons uh, sharing, when we attempt to consider resource sharing across modules, across operation constraints graph in different modules, we need to also consider the control flow structure the loops, the branches in, in those modules. So, in this we will look at this broader problem and we will, we will take simple examples to understand what, what is the actual problem that we have in hand. The first scenario is the most simple scenario. Let a module A consist of two operations a plus followed by a star. So, this is module A. It is uh, here I have a plus and here I have a star, a star, a plus followed by a star. And I have a module B which consists of two operations, a star followed by a plus. And we said that plus uses one unit delay and star consumes two unit delay, right. Now, let us consider a module M1 here which calls module A followed by module B. So, it first calls module A and then calls module B. We see that here this is very simple A and B are not concurrent and hence all operations are also not concurrent and we can apply the simple interval graph method uh, to solve it and the left edge algorithm will give me the maximum resource sharing uh, for module 1. Now, let us complicate the situation just a bit. I have a module A, uh, it consists of two operations plus followed by a star very similar to the previous one and also module B very similar star followed by a plus. Now, here the only difference is that the module B is called before module A finishes. So, I have an operation constraint graph that defines module A, I have an operation constraint graph that defines module B and I um, in the first example both these operation constraints graph um, were separated in time. The complete lifetimes of the operation constraints graph were separated in time, they were non-concurrent. Here the operation constraints graph are overlapped. Module 2, here is a module 2 that calls both module A and module B. Module 2 has a call to A at time t equals to 1 
and a call to B at time t equals to 3. Now here we see that the stars, the stars are not compatible. The star operation that is the multiplication operation takes two time units to, to execute and hence this multiplication operation and this multiplication operations are overlapped in time and hence I cannot use a single instance of a multiplier resource to execute both these operations. They become incompatible. However, the plus operations are compatible. They are separated in time and obviously they are both additions and can be implemented by the adder. So, hence the same instance of an adder can be used to uh, exec um, execute both these behavioral operations. Now, let us let us take the next small complication, higher complication. Now, we have a loop and we uh, to simplify a loop, we just say that there is a module which calls another module two times. Okay. Module A consists of two operations, a plus followed by a star, similar to the previous two examples. Now, module 3 has two calls to A at time t A equals to 1 and t A equals to 5. Now, there is a module 3 which calls A at time, uh, which calls A at time t A equals to 1 and then again calls A at time t A equals to 5. Now, M3 has three other multiplication operations. So, the two non-contiguous intervals of star, we, so we have two non-contiguous intervals of star in A. So, here this star operation in A is, is, is non-compatible with the star operation 2 here. Again, this star operation is not, is not compatible with 4 here. And here this 2 is not compatible with 3, this 4 is again not compatible with 3. So, what happens that this module A becomes non compatible with 2. Why module A is non compatible with 2? Because module um, A uh, does not complete before 2 begins. So, 2 is a distinct multiplication operation, A is another module, so A and 2 are conflicting and hence I have an edge in the conflict graph between A and 2. Similarly, I have an edge between 2 and 3 because 2 and 3 overlap. I have an edge between 3 and 4, right? I have an edge between 3 and 4 because 3 and 4 overlap. I have an edge between A and 4 because, because 4 and A overlap in time. But what we see here is that there are two distinct intervals now for this module A and it is no longer a single continuous interval and hence the conflict graph is no more an interval graph. It is not even a chordal graph. We have a cycle of length 4 and we do not have any chord which connects non-consecutive edges, a uh, non-consecutive vertices and hence this is not a chordal graph. So, this the, therefore, the addition of this simple uh, call here, um, we call a module two times with this, two, with this three additional multiplication operation makes this graph non, uh, makes this graph a non chordal graph and hence the graph coloring algorithm on this conflict graph therefore becomes NP complete and we need to apply enumerative techniques. Now, let us take another type of complication which is branching. Now, we assume that all operations, there are simple one type of operation in this example, all operations take two units times. So, start times of the operation T A is at time step 1, T B starts at time step 3, T C and T D are two mutually exclusive operations and they both start at time step 2. Now, C and D being mutually exclusive are compatible, although they execute at within the same time step because they are mutually exclusive, they can be implemented by the same resource instance because either C or D will execute, both C and D will never execute, they are mutually exclusive by this branch. 
and because of this mutual exclusion between C and D, there is not a chord between C, v, v C and V D in the conflict graph. And therefore, uh, again we have a non, non chordal graph here, why? Let us see how there is an A here, A, A and B are compatible. A, A, A and B are compatible and hence there does not exist an edge in the conflict graph. A and C are not compatible and here A and C have an edge. Similarly, A and D are not compatible and hence they are they have an edge. Why are they not compatible? Because they overlap in time. Again B and C are not compatible because they overlap in time. B and D also are non compatible because they overlap in time. And hence, in this conflict graph, this conflict graph again becomes a non chordal graph just by the introduction of a simple branch. And therefore, resource sharing over such uh, modules which contain branches and loops uh, become non trivial um, and um, cannot be solved in polynomial time. And I need uh, enumerative uh, um, techniques for graph coloring because these problem become NP complete for general graphs, non chordal graphs. However, we can apply heuristic techniques to solve general graph coloring problems. Although, these, although obviously such graph coloring techniques will not be optimal, may not be optimal, such graph coloring may not give the minimum number of colors. However, they are often essential when the problems uh, of are of very large sizes. For NP complete problems as we have seen branch and bound etcetera similar types of enumerative approaches can be applied to the graph coloring problem as well. And we are not studying it here, we have taken, we have understood a flavor of handling such, um, such big NP complete problems in, 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 in uh, with, um, with exponential complexity using combinatorial search approaches like branch and bound in previous lectures and we will not consider them here. Rather, we will understand a simple heuristic approach for solving the graph the general graph coloring problem. The solution proceeds as follows. Let us say uh, we want to find out whether a conflict graph is k colorable. So, we want to find out and allocate colors to a k colorable conflict graph. So, if the graph is k colorable, we will be able to assign colors to the vertices of this conflict graph. So, how do we proceed? We pick a node t with fewer than k neighbors. So, in the conflict graph we pick a node t with fewer than k neighbors. Then we put t that the node that is the node we have chosen and put it on the stack and remove it from the graph. So, after we take this uh, node out of the conflict graph, the, the edges adjacent to it also move away, right. Now, this exposes a few more nodes with less than k neighbors possibly. Now, if we can proceed and go on doing this, we will ultimately obtain the empty graph. That means, we, are, we will go on taking up nodes, pushing it onto the stack and uh, until all nodes in the graph have been put into the stack, right. And then the graph becomes completely empty. We may get stuck in between as well, because we do not get uh, neighboring nodes with less than k neighbors. And that does not mean that the graph will not be k colorable. We should understand that this is a heuristic approach. Now, we assign colors to the nodes in the stack one by one. We start with the last node added and at each step we pick a color different from those assigned to already colored neighbors. So, if I have neighbors previously colored neighbors with a certain color, when I take the another node out of the stack, I cannot assign a color which is same as that of its neighbors, right. We will take an example to see. Uh, this. So, let us say we are given this um, this conflict graph. So, this conflict graph say has uh, A, B, C, D, E, F operations 
and we want to allocate all these operations are of the same type and we want to allocate the minimum number of functional units necessary to color this uh, to, to color this graph. So, what do we have? We have k equals to 4. First, we will search for a node with less than 4 neighbors. So, A is such a node with less than 4 neighbors. In fact, A has 2 neighbors. So, I can remove A from this graph. When I remove A from this graph, we this is the residual graph that residual conflict graph that remains. A goes to the stack. Now, we have to find another graph which has less than 4 neighbors. So, we are assuming that the graph is 4 colorable and hence we are uh, trying to find out um, uh, neighbors which are less than 4. So, we choose D. D has 3 neighbors less than 4 neighbors and we choose D. And after we have chosen D, the, the residual graph is this one. This is the residual graph that remains and A, D and A goes into the stack. Now, we see that all the remaining nodes have less than 4 neighbors and hence I can choose in any order. So, we can remove any node. We continue removing nodes until the graph is empty. So, F, E, B, C, D, A is a, a certain order of choosing the nodes and the stack will be this after removal of all nodes. So, before the um, start of the algorithm, we see that F has more than uh, 4 neighbors, more than 3 neighbors, um, E has 4 neighbors, uh, C has 4 neighbors. So, I can choose either A or B or D, I had chosen A, that, that can be done randomly. However, I have chosen this order and I have come to this place and for now I have an empty graph. Now, when I have an empty graph and all nodes have been put into the stack, I will start assigning colors to the nodes starting from the top of the stack and at the top of the stack I have F which is the last node I have added. So, I had first added A, then I had added B, then I, uh, I took it order C, D, E, F. Now, when I have taken out C, I have allocated resource R1 with the blue color to F at this step. Then I take out the next color E and we see that E and F share an edge and hence I allocate another distinct resource R2, resource 2 uh, and color it red and I use a distinct resource because they share an edge. Now I take out edge B and we see that B has an edge with both F and E and hence I cannot use the colors blue or red and I have used black here. So, I need another instance of the resource. So, I have already used 3 instances of the resource for executing uh, F, B and E. Then I remove C and I see that C also shares an edge with each of the previous uh, nodes, each of the previous uh, operations and therefore, I have to allocate another different color say pink to this node. Now, um, I take out D we see that D and B do not share an edge and hence D and B can have the same color. So, the same resource instance can be used for both operations B and D. Resource instance R3 black can be used for both B and D. And at last I take out A, we see that A and E can have the same color because they do not share an edge and the same resource can be assigned to both of them. Hence, I have been able to allocate all the operations of my operation constraints graph using 4 colors from the corresponding conflict graph that I have by obtaining a coloring of the conflict graph uh, using 4 colors. This is a heuristic of uh, heuristic graph coloring methodology for general uh, graphs. Now, uh, we must understand that like we said that uh, uh, across modules uh, when there are loops as well as branches, conflict graph becomes non-cordal and becomes a general graph and, and polynomial algorithms do not exist for coloring. Simil um, for functional units we studied that a similar thing happens for registers as well. 
because let us say this is a, an operation instance multiplication and this operation floats its output on a particular register. Suppose I allocate a functional unit f1 to this multiplication operation. Then there are do, two distinct intervals in which the functional unit must hold operation 1. Similarly, there will be two distinct intervals for the corresponding temporary register at the output of, uh, of this multiplication operation and hence the register implemented will have two distinct intervals and will not be a simple um, interval graph anymore and hence the register coloring problem or the register allocation problem will also become a general graph coloring problem which is NP complete and um, one of the methods by which uh, we can color such uh, general graph is by the graph coloring method that we just studied. We come to the end of module 2 of lecture 7.